Alan Swa presents Ramadan special. Read, recite, reflect. Rabbana la taj'alna ma'al qawmi al-zalimeen. Our Lord, place us not with the wrongdoing people. This dua will be made by the people of the heights between Jannah and Jahannam when their faces will be turned towards the fire of Jahannam. The meaning of the dua is that, O oh Allah, do not include us among the dwellers of Jahannam who are all oppressors. A'udhu bi kalimati Allahi tammati min sharri ma khalaq. I seek refuge in the perfect words of Allah from the evil of what he has created. Protection from afflictions and calamities. Abu Hurairah narrated that a man came to the Prophet وسلم, and said, O Messenger of Allah, yesterday I was bitten by a scorpion. The Prophet وسلم, said to him, Had you said when you reached the evening the above dua, you would not have been harmed. Narrated by Abu Hurairah that the Prophet وسلم, said, Whoever recites this dua three times in the evening, he will be protected from the stings of harmful insects or reptiles. Khawla bint Hakim narrated that she heard the Messenger وسلم, saying, Whoever visited an abode and said the above dua, no harm shall befall him until he departs from that place. Quran, 19th Juz Summary. Allah tells Rasulullah that he should not be distressed about the harassment of the kuffar because your Rabb suffices as a guide and helper. Allah also commands Rasulullah to tell the people that he requires no remuneration for his efforts to propagate Islam. The only reward he desired was that people follow the straight path and become true bondsmen of Allah, who walk on earth with humility and when the ignorant talk to them, they avoid disputes when they say peace. This means that they do not enter into arguments with ignorant people and gracefully pass by them. Allah then makes it clear that the true mu'minin will attain lofty ranks of Jannah while the kuffar will be unable to save themselves from Allah's punishment. Surah Shu'ara follows Surah Furqan. This surah contains the stories of Hazrat Musa and Hazrat Ibrahim as well as mention of the destruction of the Ad, the Thamud and the nation of Hazrat Nuh Allah also makes mention of the plight that evil poets who are constantly lost in the futile thoughts will suffer. Addressing Rasulullah Allah states, It seems like you will destroy yourself because they are not believing. If we willed, we would have revealed a great sign to them from the sky causing their necks to bow before it in humility. However, because the kuffar have already refused to accept the truth, they will have to suffer the punishment for their obstinacy. Allah then proceeds to recount the stories of Hazrat Ibrahim, Hazrat Noah, Hazrat Hud, Hazrat Saleh, Hazrat Lut and Hazrat Shu'ib Each one of them incidents is a means of guidance for people but there will still be many rejectors who refuse to believe in them and will mock at them. Allah says they have certainly denied so shortly the news of what they used to mock at will come to them. The Mushrikeen claimed that Rasulullah was a poet and that the Quran was a composition of poetry. Allah denies that the Quran could ever be the work of a poet or a jinn. Allah concludes the surah by saying, Only deviated people follow the poets. Do you not see that they wander astray in every valley and that they say things which they never do? Save for those poets who believe, do good, acts, remember Allah abundantly and avenge themselves after being oppressed. Shortly the oppressors will come to know to which place they will return. We then come to Surah Naml. Allah states that the Quran is a guidance and a conveyor of glad tidings for the believers. In this regard, the Surah proceeds to discuss the epics of Hazrat Musa, Hazrat Dawood, Hazrat Sulaiman, the Ad, and the Thamud. Allah opens the Surah by saying, These are the verses of the Quran and a clear book. It is a guidance and a conveyor of glad tidings for the believers, those who establish salah, pay zakah, and are convinced about the akhirah. Allah further says that He has beautified the acts of the kuffar so that they continue to sin and earn multiple punishment for it. Allah says about them, For such people there shall be a terrible punishment, and they will be the worst losers in the akhirah. Thereafter, Allah addresses Rasulullah saying, Undoubtedly, you are given the Quran from the wise, the all knowing. Allah relates the detailed incidents of Hazrat Dawood and Hazrat Sulaiman. The stories of these two illustrious Anbiya begin with verse 15, where Allah says, We granted knowledge to Dawood and Sulaiman. Among the many bounties that Allah conferred on them, 
was that he taught them the language of the birds and also granted them control over the jinn, humans, animals and birds. Allah recounts these incidents so that people may learn lessons and realize the power of Allah. May Allah grant us all the capacity to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and may Allah save us from all sins especially from those sins that were the cause for other nations to be destroyed. May Allah also afford us the consciousness to accept the Quran as a fountainhead of guidance and our code of life. Amen. <laughs>